have him try you in his uh, apno dent appliance for a little while to just see if that really is what's causing your pain. Because what, what that appliance is, is it, it is a splint. Okay. And I don't recommend a splint as a cure for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't ever advocate a piece of plastic being worn in your mouth as a permanent solution to a situation like yours, especially as a, what, how old are you again? 23. Jesus, man. You're so young and so brilliant for your age. Um, Thanks, you're not going to wear a piece of plastic in your mouth for the rest of your life. Okay. You have a lot of life to live. And so, but the T, but the splint from Dr. Yusefian, which he calls the apno dent mm -hmm. or the apno TX, they're, they're very similar is a diagnostic tool. You wear it. It puts your mandible into a healthier position forward where you're already resting it by your own intuition. Mm -hmm. Okay. Puts it there in a more, uh, uh, let's say stable configuration throughout the day that doesn't require you to have to like mindfully advance it. Mm -hmm. You just do that for a couple of months and see what your symptoms are like, right? Don't do any more Botox in the meantime, because the Botox okay. is muddying the waters. Right. It's 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 essentially a painkiller that's hiding your real sure. pain. Sure. Sure. I just felt I just felt like but... I was at the point where I'm like, I need to do something to relieve some of these symptoms somehow. And that was that was an option that I had, which was cheap, by the way. For sure. And look, the Botox too was a diagnostic tool. You, mm -hmm. you, you, you took those muscles offline and you felt better. Mm -hmm. So the problem is that those muscles are being overactivated. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to go one layer deeper, which is what effect is the, uh, uh, the bite, the occlusion, the malocclusion in your case, having on, uh, that muscle, the musculature tensing up in the first place, right? So mm -hmm. we're going one layer deeper. And then the final layer is if we can demonstrate over, let's say, a six-month period with the splint that by putting the mandible into a better orientation that the symptoms subside, now we go to the final layer, which is permanently giving you that structure by moving your jaw bones. And that's the order of operations. So one question that I have in regards to that is, have I not been doing something similar to that manually by pressing or moving my jaw forward as I walk around and about my daily activities, or is this moving it into a different position than I've already been doing manually? No, you, you are mimicking what the splint is going to do, but here's okay. what the splint, but every time you eat, for example, right, mm -hmm. you're, you have to eat in a way that your molars touch, right? Otherwise you can't chew. Mm -hmm. And then <clears throat> the other thing is when you sleep, you can't, be skillful about your mandibular placement. So you're probably just clenching back into that molar contact yes. bite. Yes. Right. So sleep is the 30% of your day that you have no control. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, you need to make it official probably for insurance purposes. Right. So those are the advantages that the splint gives you that your reposturing don't give you. Understood. Now, um, something came to mind and that is that uh one of the issues i have with when i do manually move the jaw or protrude the mandible forward and i try to bite is that uh, my two front teeth are so long and large that i just am not able to get a seal on the front teeth so much so that it prevents the the rear the molars from getting a seal as well uh, is that going to present an issue with treatment down the line if i choose to do so I mean, what you're describing is why an orthodontic solution to your problem is is difficult. Your teeth, because your maxilla is grown unnaturally in this sort of downward swing, mm -hmm. right? Especially the front of your maxilla, um, which the root cause of that is probably poor tongue posture as an infant. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to move those teeth in a way that they get out of your lower jaw's way without either shaving them down intruding them or doing a million and a million and one other camouflage orthodontic tricks to kind of get your front teeth out of the way of your lower jaw to swing forward. And you can do that. And I said that earlier that you can camouflage the fuck out of this with right. orthodontics. You can, mm -hmm. you, another thing you can do is you can do buildups on your teeth to just make your back teeth taller so that your front teeth are relatively not as much in the way. Mm -hmm. But the root solution is to just take your maxilla and rotate it. OK, mm -hmm. because it's the bone that's angled and the teeth are just furniture on that floor of an angle, that angled floor. Now, given that it seems obvious at this point, I have a downswing in the maxilla. 
Um, is it also obvious to you that I have a cant laterally causing asymmetry? Um, so just so you know, Robbie, I, I have another call. I got to jump on. It started at five. I'm already a minute late. Oh, I so apologize. We'll, no, 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 no. You're good. So we have to wrap up probably after this, uh, the, after sure. looking at the cant. Um, but show me what you think to be a cant. I haven't seen a maxillary cant yet, but let me take a look. Smile, well, smile right into the camera. Maybe a slight cant with your right side being higher than the left. Is that, that what you see? Yeah, that was yeah. my that was my uh, synopsis. Basically, yeah. that was my conclusion. Yeah, um, it's I there. I see I have, it. I have no particular objective asking you that. I was just that was out of curiosity. Well, it, it's 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 there, and just another uh, uh, important point to make about the cant is if you do a marpy, the marpy will probably make that worse which for someone who is uh, 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 hyper aware of uh, their facial aesthetic is going to be very disconcerting for you. You okay. take that to an extreme where if you get, let's say, a 10 millimeter Marpy expansion, Marpy being the same thing as MSE, by the way, just okay. a, naso a nasomaxillary expander, uh, a big expansion would take that cant and it would make it way worse. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Another, another reason why surgery... Um, you know, when they correct your maxilla surgically, they just take the maxilla and they just flatten it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, so an another thing to, to keep in mind. Uh, fair enough. Okay. Um, well, I know uh, you've got to go to your next call. I appreciate the time. I really, really do. This has been extremely helpful. Like I, I can't even put into words and articulate how helpful this has been. Um, to conclude, um, number one, are you able to send me... Um, well, as much follow-up information as you can in regards to um, uh, procedural information and uh, perhaps any sort of protocol or, or next steps to follow. I know that we talked about stuff earlier, but if you can send me anything. Um, so, so the best thing for us to do is I'll, I will just give you that right now orally okay. while it's fresh. Okay. And also just because I'm terrible with email. So sure. Um, for you procedurally, I really feel strongly about you going to see Dr. Yousefian to get a diagnosis. Okay. I don't take conditions like yours lightly. If it, if in fact your, your left TMJ is going through a state of resorption right now, I don't know if I trust many other people in the country to look at that and diagnose it. Certainly mm -hmm. not anyone in the Midwest. I don't know anyone. Maybe if you come East, you know, you could see, you know, Dr. Lipkin, who's also fantastic with TMJ issues or, or mm -hmm. you know, Dr. Evans. But um, given your location, you're going to be traveling to one of the coasts. And I would say Dr. Yousefian is the next step for you. And mm -hmm. then if you do engage with Dr. Yousefian, he likes to work with a surgeon. I believe his name is uh, Samuel Bobeck. So he would sort of coordinate that. Um, but you might be surprised. Dr. Yousefian might have some tricks up his sleeve where he could do like, I don't know, but he has a lot of orthodontic tools available to him where he might be able to um, provide some, some orthodontic relief to your situation. I mean, he's going to give you a, a, a splint to start mm -hmm. as a diagnostic. Um, apart from going to see Dr. Yousefian, Yousefian, what did you have in mind in terms of like uh, information you wanted me to provide you? Well, um, as much information on the surgery that you mentioned as possible, um, as that's something I don't want to take lightly and I wouldn't want to step outside the realm of, um, uh, the expertise of people like you that I'm consulting. So I wouldn't want to, essentially, I wouldn't do anything that you wouldn't do yourself. Sure. Um, given our conversation today. Um, so I'd like some more information on that if you, if you can provide it. And then, um, so on that note, let me, let's mm -hmm. just knock that point out. So. I don't have a lot of information about surgery. I'm trying okay. to put that together. So here's what I can give you. I can give you names. I can give you names of surgeons that get a lot of positive hype across the internet. Okay. Um, so that would be uh, Dr. Michael Gunson in LA. Mm -hmm. You can do lots of searches on him and his results. Mm -hmm. That would be uh, Dr. Waleen um, and anyone at um, LA comms is LA comms is like an orthodontic surgery uh group in in los angeles okay uh, you could watch my interview with dr alfie which is an excellent uh matrix download on jaw surgery okay 
Um, Dr. Razor Movahead does, not only does he do surgeries like the ones we talked about uh, that involve a, a maxillary advancement, but he also does TMJ replacements, which if you don't get a, you know, a grasp of your situation, you could end up needing a TMJ replacement at some point. Mm. Um, well, I don't want that. No, you don't. Uh, Dr. Uh, Paul Kochiancic, who runs the Profilo uh, website, who mm -hmm. I just interviewed the other day, I'll be posting that, although we didn't really get too technical on jaw surgery, but anything by Paul or about Paul would be insightful for you. Um, and then another interesting thing would be um, if we did end up posting this interview, we had mentioned that earlier. You're more than welcome to if you'd like. Okay, well, if you do end up allowing me to post it, then you're essentially opening yourself up to comments, which are oftentimes, in my opinion, very helpful because my audience, man, is so smart and so well-researched. Mm -hmm. And if we do post it, then we can just invite people in the comments to also um, share their thoughts in terms of next steps for you, which could be, could be helpful. By all means, by all means. All right. Thank you, man. And what else? What else, Robbie? What other information well, did you want? Lastly, um, the only other thing I'm curious about, as you mentioned, uh, getting a diagnosis with TMJ and you mentioned Dr. Yousefian, of course, um, is it worth my while or is it at least worth a shot to if I have a TMJ specialist around here, I can get a quick appointment with and perhaps get a diagnostic and maybe they do diagnose me with, um, again, um, that issue on the left side, as you mentioned earlier, is that worth doing? So that way I don't go all the way out to Dr. Yousefian before perhaps moving into, uh, the next step of the, uh, the protocol, or would you recommend just probably forgetting that to begin with and going out there to Seattle? I mean, I'm in a point in my life where I feel like my time is so limited that if I know that there's a top person out there that can give me an answer, mm -hmm. I would be, I would just get up and go, especially with, you know, with TMJ diagnosis, it's a fucking minefield out there, man. I mean, everyone has their own pet theory about how TMJ issues work and evolve and how to treat them. And, um, I, I don't know anyone in Ohio or anywhere near there that is mm -hmm. going to be able to give you that answer. And so it, you could, you could certainly do research and, and take, take a stab at it and take an mm -hmm. appointment with a, a you know, an orthodontist, maybe someone who at least mentions TMJ disorders on their website mm -hmm. could be worth it. But in terms of the fastest route to success, it would just be to make an appointment and travel. Um, you, you may be able to get a digital consultation with Dr. Yousefi and to just feel each other out initially. But yeah, no, my answer to your question is, um, I wouldn't even bother locally and I, and I wouldn't treat it as just a, 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 a um, um, what do they call it? You know, uh, just flippantly. I know I wouldn't, I wouldn't just see the TMJ diagnosis as like a, a path to jaw surgery. You actually want like someone who understands what's you're going on, because even if you need, okay. even if you end up doing jaw surgery, you're going to need an orthodontist who's going to, prep you for jaw surgery and you want whoever that person is to understand the goal that you're striving towards in terms of the ultimate bite that you want to achieve. So you're going to need an ortho, a good orthodontist anyway. So don't treat it just as a flippant prerequisite for jaw surgery and actually take it seriously, just, exactly. as, ser just as seriously as the jaw surgery. Okay. hundred percent. Your orthodontist is going to be your quarterback throughout the whole process of you seeking surgery, getting the surgeon to take your case and then you need the surgeon and the orthodontist to coordinate on what the uh, final goal and vision of your face is going to be. Now, I'm assuming whoever I see surgeon wise would take care of figuring out who that orthodontist would be, or do I need to figure that out on my end? Well, it's kind of a chicken in the egg thing. I mean, uh, I think you start with the orthodontist and then you go to the surgeon after the, the, mm. the orthodontist is the quarterback. The surgeon okay. is like a contractor, really. Not the other okay. way around. I okay. mean, you're going to see the surgeon twice. You're going to see the orthodontist 25 times. Mm. Interesting. Okay. I'm, uh, I'm glad you said so. Um, I just like to be as specific as I can about these things. I don't want to meddle about and muck about. Um, well, lastly, if you just, if there's anything else, any other comments, concerns you have, just let me know. Um, don't rush into anything take mm -hmm. your time with the diagnostic phase um let dr yousefian do his thing 
He's slow and deliberate about his treatment process. There's a long diagnostic phase. Embrace that. You're not in a hurry. You're young enough to just sort of go along for the ride with him. Okay, he that's a relief be, to hear. He, okay. he can be trusted. Okay. And then, um, so that that's what I would say. Just start there and go through the motions with Dr. Yusefian. With that being said, I'm assuming time is still of the essence and it's better to correct this sooner than later. Correct. Well, but you can't rush quality and you can't sure. rush you can't rush what he's going to be doing because a big part of it is just getting the splint and then sitting back and watching to see what happens. Sure. Sure. Okay.